Okay, so this is another YouTube video that uh, is going to demonstrate how to solve an elastic collision this time problem. Uh, it's an elastic collision in two dimensions and we need to follow the strategy that uh, I um, outlined for you in my PowerPoint slides. So, an elastic collision is when objects collide and after collision they separate, they do not stick together. So we have object M1 uh, moving to the right on, uh, on the x-axis with velocity v1, uh, an object M2 at rest to begin with. The masses M1 and M2 are the same, so the given, part of the given is that M1 equals M2 and equals M, so rather than just putting the indices M1, M2 over there, we're just gonna use M since they are the same. After they collide elastically, uh, the, the first object over here will uh, move now with the velocity v1 prime at an angle theta 1 with the x-axis in the first quadrant and the other object will move with the velocity v2 prime at an angle theta 2 in the fourth quadrant uh, with respect to the x-axis. Now theta 1 and theta 2 are equal to each other and equal to theta, so therefore rather than using the indices theta 1 there and theta 2 here, I just wrote theta for simplicity reasons. So we need to calculate how fast they will be moving after collision. Um, let's go ahead and um, apply the conservation of momentum. So we are going to say that the total momentum before on the x equals the total momentum after on the x-axis. Leave some room to develop this equation further and the same thing for the y. Total momentum on the y before collision equals total momentum after collision on the y. Now, before collision, we only have one vector that's horizontal, doesn't have to be resolved. Uh, and after collision, we do have two vectors uh, that must be resolved. So let's do that carefully. Uh, when we resolve the green vector here, V2 prime carefully again, so we can have right triangles. We are going to have one component here and one component here. This component, the horizontal one, is going to be the adjacent to theta, so it's v2 prime cosine theta. And the vertical one is the same as this one, which is the opposite, so it's v2 prime sine theta. Now for v1 prime, we are going to do the exact same thing. And we are going to resolve it carefully by drawing perpendiculars to the x and y axis giving us one component this way and the other component that way. Now this one is going to be V1 prime cosine theta, and this one over here is going to be V1 prime sine theta. So now we have all our vectors going in either x or y direction. Uh, we just have to pick our positive directions, making sure that we show that. Uh, cho chosen positive direction. I'm going to go for the horizontal, since all horizontal vectors go to the right. I'm going to go to the right. And for vertical, I have one going up, one going down, so it really does doesn't matter whether it's up or down. I'm just going to choose up. And those are my positive chosen directions. Now I'm ready to develop the equations further. So before collision, all we have on the x uh, is this momentum that is positive, so we have positive mv1 equals after, this would be plus zero, right, because this is at rest. So you can write it, you don't really have to, but you can write it. After collision, we have um, both um, uh, objects moving to the right, uh, they will have momentum positive, both of them then, plus m, again, mv1 prime cosine theta, and another plus mv2 prime cosine theta. When we simplify this, we get mv1 equals mv1 v prime cosine theta plus mv2 prime cosine theta. Um, and then we can actually uh, simplify this equation further by factoring out the mass on the right hand side, a mass and the cosine theta really, so uh, let's do that. 
factor out mass times cosine theta here. And what we have left is a V1 prime plus a V2 prime. And here we just have the same MV1. Um, for the y, let's go ahead and do the same thing and look at the equations for the y. While before collision there is no y vector, so therefore we have a zero here. Let's just extend this line a little bit. So on the y there is no before y momentum. After we have two, one going up, one going down. So we are going to have a sum of two vectors. One will be positive, this one going up, which is mv1 prime sine theta, that's my positive one. And the other one is going to be negative, it's going downwards, so negative mv2 prime sine theta. When we simplify this, we get 0 equals mv1 prime sine theta minus m v2 prime sine theta. Uh, we can do the same thing as we did over here to further simplify this. We get 0 equals m sine theta, open parenthesis, v1 prime minus v2 prime. So now we have these two equations, this one in blue, this one in purple, and we need to calculate v1 prime and v2 prime. Um, first, what we are going to do uh, is divide both sides of the equation by m here and the same thing here, divide by m and then the simpler forms of these two equations will be, so let me write them down over here, this one becomes v1 equals cosine theta multiplied by v1 prime plus v2 prime and this one here becomes 0 divided by m is still 0 equals sine theta divided by v1 prime minus v2 prime. So now we have these two equations and all we have to do is solve this system of equations to calculate v1 prime and v2 prime because uh, everything else is given. So whatever method you want to use, it's totally up to you. Um, so um, let me just uh, maybe here divide both sides by sine theta to make it even easier, right? So that's going to be a 0 still divided by sine, sine theta is 0, sine divided by sine uh, gives me a 1, and v1 prime minus v2 prime, which means that v1 prime in fact is equal to v2 prime. Well, that simplifies the mathematics very nicely because if we plug that in here, we should be able to finish the problem very nicely. So let's go ahead and do that. So taking this part and going back there will give me, I'm going to move to this side of the board, uh, v1 equals cosine theta uh, multiplied by v1 prime plus v2 prime, but v1 prime equals v2 prime, so I can say v1 prime plus another v1 prime, while v1 prime plus v1 prime is 2 v1 prime. So v1 is going to be 2 v1 prime cosine theta, which means v1 prime will be v1 over 2 cosine theta, which is also equal to v2 prime. So there we go, that is our answer. So once again, the answer to this problem, let me write it here one more time to make sure that is visible in the video, is v1 prime equals v2 prime and equals v1 over 2 cosine theta. Thank you.